I'm Ali Patterson and welcome to The Fintech Show. On today's episode, we're examining the basis behind why banks are having to innovate at speed while dealing with legacy solutions. We take a step back and examine the tech and the culture behind these changes and look at digital journeys starting from opening up API connections to fully cloud-based collaborations. To get a closer look at this huge industry-wide shift, I've brought in three guests from the UK, Benelux and the Nordics to see how this movement is progressing across Europe. From Luna, we have Fleming Laugensen, the Chief Technology Officer of an incredibly innovative and exciting bank from Denmark. From Boomi, a Dell Technologies business, we have Mike Kiersey. Boomi is a company that can get organizations of any size connected to a cloud-native platform in a quick and easy fashion. And last but not least, we have Tom DeVitica, KBC's CIO. KBC's presence in the Benelux and also their, their forward-thinking approach means I'm quite, uh, quite excited to capture their insights for today's episode. Well, with the guests out of the way, let's get right into it and start at the beginning of a bank's digital transformation journey, the API. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, about APIs, uh, Application Programming Interface. And why have these been so critical for enabling banks to take advantage of this, this technology fintech revolution we find ourselves in? Yeah, so, so first of all, the API as a, as a term is, is actually very old. Uh, so API has been there for like pretty much ever since the birth of engineering, so to speak. But I was more like in a, cool, in a closed system where, you know, you use API to talk in turn with programs. But of course, with the birth of internet, everything starts to open up a little bit more than the API was more common uh, outside engineering. So API is actually just defining a sort of a contract between systems to talk and inter interact with each other. So that could be whatever getting a data or ask for a function to be done. You call through system with APIs across the internet as well. Since the adoption of open banking, some of the small, nimble, agile banks have started to really eat into the market share of the, uh, of the incumbents because of their ability to innovate and move quickly. How can larger organizations use open banking and open APIs just as effectively? I think I think there's I think there's two di 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 dilemmas there, right? Or dichotomies of that is the bigger organizations are, are hugely big, very complex engines, and they have got many more cogs operating as part of that engine versus small, nimble, high speed electric version of the bank, right? Versus the the um, um, you know, petrol driven or diesel vision of a, of a, a traditional bank. I think there's also a, a different side to that is um, the traditional banks have a lot of complexity, right? They've been made up of years and years of different project based um, deliveries of IT and IT services to deliver banking sort of needs. Whereas the, the innovating banks have come straight in, they've been able to adopt API. They haven't got the legacy of mainframe technologies and all of the other things that got that. And they've, they've also know what they're picking up from those APIs to develop their products versus in some of the traditional banks is we've got one solution that delivers credit cards, one solution that delivers, you know, your, your, um, your transaction sort of banking, your mortgages, et cetera. Right. And they've not been harmonized enough. Whereas they've come in with a new, new, new approach of doing that. I think the other bit is, is the, the challenger banks have not seen the same. They've, they've not got to the size and scale where governance is now having to have a different thing. So they will be and already are looking at the bigger banks to say, well, you know, we're now starting to come and we're seeing these elastic pains already. How are you guys solving them today, right? Versus as much as the other side, the big banks are looking at the challenger banks going, hey, it's really innovative, we can do that, right? And how do we do? And I think some of those for the big banks is, A, looking at a cultural perspective, right? How do they do things internally? I think the other bit is how IT and the business need to be a lot more harmonized in terms of how they do things um, versus IT just delivering an IT sort of function. Um, and I think then the other bits on both sides is how can they adopt not just new innovating technology, but how do they deliver new patterns within that architecture to, to release value more quickly and more efficiently. And that's not talking about application development and DevOps. It's actually more of the enterprise architecture of how they can move to be more of a packaged um, business architecture or composable enterprise sort of moving forward where these guys have been able to adopt those patterns from day one because they've been developed with, you know, tens of years of history of IT. How can 
large organizations without that inbuilt culture really use open banking just as effectively? Is, is, is cloud the key to this? Well, um, maybe two things to, to, to bring a bit perspective in the question, uh, because it's a very good question, uh, specifically because it touches upon technology as a lever to bring a much broader, I think, like a much better customer experience. And I think one would or should never forget, actually, that technology is a kind of helping out, bringing a new perspective to what one can achieve towards its customers. But as such, it is not enough to actually take full advantage. What it does require at larger institutions is this obsessed customer mentality that really brings a culture inside that we do need to do better than we did yesterday. We need to, con to continue to excel towards our customers. We need to find new ways, better ways to make life much more convenient for our customers. And if that can be done because the technology is evolving and is helping out greatly, then yes, that is the way to go. So I would put it a bit like um, banks who are neglecting on the cultural side and just take technology for the simple art of technology are not going to see a lot of leverage on it. And then answering the question on cloud, um, yes, I do believe cloud is a huge facilitator of all of this. Because if you're an IT professional, for sure many of us will remember the days when we received requests to bring new functionality to customers and it took us days or weeks uh, to spin up IT infrastructure. In today's world, that is completely unthinkable. We are talking now about minutes and, uh, and hours maybe to spin up new stuff so that we can uh, easily actually uh, immediately uh, reply to all of our customers' uh, requests and, uh, and services that are required. Um, the benefits of cloud reach far beyond the simple means of being uh, quick and agile. Um, it's a fantastic answer to many of new business requests. Imagine like a greenfield operation you would like to set up a decade ago, how to decide on sizing your IT infrastructure. Are you expecting a steep adoption of the service by your customers, prospects? So should you actually foresee a large pool of IT infrastructure and then potentially be hugely disappointed with huge costs if the market isn't as speedy and agile as you would expect it to be? Or would you simply do it the other way around, take a more prudent approach and then actually be unable to cope with a massive inflow of unexpected customers? This is where cloud is bringing huge and fantastic answers because it's so easy to spin up and also spin down if necessary. So the flexibility cloud technology on the IT infrastructure has brought is tremendous. And I think it's uh, uh, providing businesses with, with uh, a lot of flexibility and good, new, decent, stable technology uh, to realize business plans. The IT department has a critical role in a large financial institution, especially if the board isn't following their, uh, their innovations. How can large banks harmonize their IT department and other subdivisions to ensure that everyone's vision of global transformation and innovation is on the same page? Yeah, I, I think that's, um, you know, when you look at the financial teams uh, and, and industry, and actually a lot of other industries are in the same one, is we've got the board, we've got the business, we've got IT. And, and sometimes I think one of the biggest challenges you've got culture is actually there's no common language, right, between what the business want and what, what IT want. And then actually the, they, they don't know how to harmonize that. I think moving forward is that you need to have a business IT continuum. Right on, let's say on the left hand side, you've got the deep expertise of technologists in IT, right? But it's a sliding scale down to the business. And then on the business side, on the right hand side, you've got business domain expertise and services and knows everything around what banking should be. And that's got a sliding curve going the other way down to IT. And I think what we've got is that opportunity to fusion a business IT sort of model, right? And we tend to see that in enterprise architecture with business analysts, with enterprise architects together and business owners, right? To try and build that mix in a team. And I think banks need to do more and more of that, that you can um, enable that, that fusion, that culture. 
But I think also IT and the business need to come up with some common tools that the business can start to use, right? So the IT is not just the what we, you know, we manage all the banking and all the transactions and all the infrastructure and all the applications. You know, the business want to be part of that now. They want to be part of the decision tree to understand what tools are you going to start ordering that we can now start to use. And I think that sort of gravitational pull and um, how could I say, the blurring of the lines between IT and the business needs to now come, right? There shouldn't be, you know, black and white, right? They should be a good good color of gray in the middle where the business and IT come together. You know, it's not easy. It's a, you know, it's a fusion of different roles and um, and culture and, um, and idealisms and architectures and, and business needs, right? But, all of that needs to come together and that's where you know truly enterprise architecture really came out of is the business vision the strategy um and what are the component trees of our it can help deliver against that um is that but i think you know going back to the to to the drawing board and readdressing that and it coming up with capabilities or tools and services that the business can adopt and be more self-servient around delivering some of their projects themselves how is this specific institute actually running you know, how are the rules and expectation? What are the ways of working? How do they do goal management? How do they do organizational design? I think that is probably more important than cloud. Because if, if you don't look at how you work, how you're set up, how you engage with your, with your employees, you know, then moving to cloud might not help you necessarily. It's just another infrastructure. So I really think you need to, 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 to look at, you know, what are the environment that the engineers work in? Are they work in a, a fail safe environment or safe to fail environment? You know, are they are they are they seeking pains or they're trying to avoid pains? So all this kind of you know, it's, it's nothing about culture, I think will will help unlock the, the more settled institutes to break out of their habits. Because I think the most important is to break out these habits and ways of working. And then cloud is just, don't get me wrong, because it's really important. I will, you know, without cloud, I will be unhappy. But I think for the bigger institute, cloud, if, if cloud by itself is the goal, then I think they'll miss the opportunity to actually reinvent and start thinking as a technology company. So Boomi, you know, is a, is a platform to help innovate, right? We are a, in some cases, we are a full stack application development platform all purely low code. You can come in and develop some really cool feature rich thought business applications and also associate the business process around the value chain of that data and as part of that process. At the other side of the spectrum is actually we are the conduit glue between all of these different business applications and APIs that could be consumed from a SaaS based service in the web or it's a, a legacy application on premise that's now got a bubble wrapper of microservices. We can we can connect and 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 um, orchestrate that data activity through low code, right? Through a design canvas. Or actually in the other aspects in you know where we're seeing more and more is the conversation is all around data. I right? got lots of data. No one's asking for it slower and less of it. We're seeing more of it. Or actually, how do we ingest that? How do we discover it? How do we catalog that? How do we get that prepared and merge and match that data with other data sets that is either from a, a known business record, right? Or a, a golden record for within death master data management, or it's a case of we've just got new data feeds coming in and how do we harmonize that together? And I think Boomi as a platform is, is an innovating way that both IT and the business can collaborate without too much of a technology depth from the business side, I actually start to build some really cool applications, be able to understand what data means to them and experiment with speed and efficiency, be able to integrate these business um, applications and services, if, regardless if they're on-premise or in the cloud of their choice with, with uber efficiency, right? So what we're now starting to do is take out legacy technologies and debts that's associated that stop people doing this. But what we're also doing is forging a culture that allows the business to start working alongside the IT on projects where they can both innovate together. How has the, the Benelux region adapted to open banking and, and uh, PSD2? So like, um, I think, well, obviously, I think like, uh, and a bit to our own surprise, uh, we saw that the large incumbent banks in the markets were obviously like, uh, like not, not all that fast. To, to embrace the new technologies. Some were, some were a bit ahead of the pack, some other were a bit like lagging. 
we found ourselves like uh, on the leading side of the edge. Um, of course, now if you look at after PSE2 and regulation has popped in, uh, you could see like a, a much broader, a much larger like uh, embracing uh, happening over this new API uh, technology. Uh, first and foremost, because legislation was asking to. But also you could start that some of our competitors actually have started doing exactly what we were doing, like seeing the strategic advantage of it for their own customers, uh, embracing it, bringing new solutions to the market. And actually as a result, I think uh, the big winner of this all is the ultimate end customer because new functionality is being provided in a much faster and more convenient way. And I believe this is exactly what we need to do as a financial industry in all of our markets. So answering your question, I think Benelux in my, it's a kind of a mixed view we have, I think. Um, it's not to say that uh, the region was lagging or whatever. It's more like a mixed bag, I would call it. If you look at it today, I think you can see that it's largely being uh, used across almost every uh, financial player in the market. Um, so I think for an in incumbent world, um, at least what, what I sort of see here in the Nordic is more like uh, they do it for compliance reasons, mm -hmm. but the FinTech, FinTech goes in and see different business models business opportunities and then start grabbing these API and then build something on top that puts more the user in control. And, and I think this is also what the incumbents or you know the large institute is starting you know, to figure out, you know, we need to be on top of this, we need to you know use it because otherwise they might be out of business. Well not out of business, but at least they will be be um, under some pressure. Let's talk a little bit about well, about open banking and uh, PSD2. Do, do you think that in the Nordics, we're going to start to see a lot of Nordic banks look to Boomi in this kind of open banking remit? What's the, what's kind of the, the prediction and the follow through here? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, we're now seeing pockets of, of banking institutes, you know, sort of moving forward with open banking. This is a great opportunity for, for Boomi to, to help capitalize and help these organizations with uh, PSD2 and start looking at the open banking capabilities and, and start to look at how they can design for the future, how they can connect for the future um, and start bringing you know, greater value through that data quickly and more efficiently. At the end of the day, you know, it's a regulatory need to be able to share data easily and quickly for them to build new products and allow the, the fintechs to come in and you know help bring new new ideas to the table. I think you know Boomi is in a, a great place to help you know nurture that, develop it and help you know help countries like the Nordics and different and other regions you know capitalize on the capabilities of uh, PSD2 and open open APIs. So uh, uh, Mike, can we talk a little bit as well about I mean it's not just about the Nordic region. you guys are also doing a lot of work within uh, within Benelux. Can we kind of expand on some of the work that Boomi is doing with some of the big banks in the Benelux region? I think you look at the growth of what's happening. I think there's a lot of organizations, certainly in the region, are now looking to capitalize on that. You know, it's going to it's going to foster a, a fuel or foster and fuel a hub of activity right around how organizations can capitalize this. And but also in the region, you have a mixture of you know, well-known institutions and new organizations together. And that balance is quite close. Right. When you look at different regions, is more of the institutional organizations and less of the fintechs. Right. I think there's going to be, uh, you know, opportunity to grow, develop and nurture how how they're going to capitalize on, on the capabilities of open banking. Well, I think that's all we've got time for on this episode of the Fintech Show. I'd like to thank Fleming, Mike and Tom for their time and their insights. It's been an incredibly refreshing to start right back at the beginning and look at the humble API and then seeing how it has transformed banks for the better. Thanks for watching, and as usual, you can watch more episodes and more videos of The Fintech Show over at fintechf.com, and of course, on YouTube and LinkedIn. See you soon. Bye for now.